Dr. S. Ramakrishna, Dr. Reza Barwa, Dr. Tejbi, and Dr. Kirti Kapala. I think uh, we had a very scintillating talks, uh, especially the orations, Dr. Neil, and then of course Dr. M. Kitash talk was very good, and then of course the oration with Dr. Kuthari. So we will move on to the smaller subsets of uh, lectures on uh, PCI. And I always give, uh, really, I commend all the three speakers, Dr. Ras, Dr. Neil, and Dr. Kuthari. So we have uh, our co chairperson, will be Dr. Ramakrishnan and Dr. And we have four, uh, five topics here. Uh, first topic will be covered by myself, uh, which is TEB and PCI. Second will be by Dr. Arindar Singh Rao is here. Third will be Dr. Anindam Pate, then Dr. S. N. Bhupati, and Dr. Ritu Una Korea. So it will be good talk, and I have to start my first presentation. So I move from chairing to the speaker's side. Dr. Ramakrishna will take over. So my my first visit to Shillong, and I was very keen. I spoke to Neil, and he said, "Okay, why don't you come here?" I've been presenting many 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 lectures all over the world. I'm also founder of the Indian European course, and with blessing of Dr. Das, I'm also at the moment CSI Executive Committee member. The topic is drug routing balloons in percutaneous coronary intervention. We are not using this drug routing balloon too often. But of course, there are specific indications where it will be used and should be used. And we are also using it personally. I'm also using it quite a bit. So again, thanks to Dr. Amit Malvi and Dr. Neil Bordoy for giving us the opportunity to talk here. Topic is important. No disclosures. Uh, before I give any talk, I always give a, my, to my mentor a salute to my mentor, Professor Alan Trivia, because I had a very special time with him when Tavi was being evolved at that time. <clears throat> this is a few pictures that I want to share. To everybody, whenever I, my stay in 1996-98, Tavi was not known, but it was in his mind and hypothesis. And then he started animal experimentation. I had a very special relationship. He has been to my house in Sarita Vihar in Delhi. Uh, the first picture, of course, my younger son, Dr. Kuber, is giving cycling. And we had a very fond relationship. This is our first Tavi case, which we did in November 2011, when Tavi was not available in India at the time. I took the patient from India to his lab in Rouen, where I worked. And this was the first patient who, who survived for nine years later on. So coming on to my topic, this was my small emotional tribute to my always mentor. Revolution in coronary intervention, coming on to this, we all know 1977, Andrew Strunzek did the first PTC in Germany. First angioplasty was done in Zurich, so the net is wrongly written. Actually, it was done in Germany. The slide is wrong. And then, of course, he became hero overnight. And you know what? Know that America was very smart enough, and they really took him. And in fact, I will not say bought him, but they made Andrew Goodchild suit there, and he was shifted from Germany. He was a fellow in Germany. He was shifted from Germany to the United States. He had a very early death. He had his, uh, his charter plane crashed. And he did not see all the further evolutions. We know that Poba leads to intimate dissections, and therefore we needed something more. Doctor Ulrich Sigmar, my personal friend from Switzerland did the first stent implantation in 1987. And very few people will know that Jacques Fion in France, he did actually in 15 days before he did an extending, but this was not known to many. And publication came from first from Ulrich Sigward. So everybody knows Ulrich Sigward more than Dr. Jacques Paul in France, who did the first stenting actually, if you see the date timeline. But publication was more important when he intimated, unless you do intimation to the publication body, you will not know. So this is what happened with Sigurd and Jack Spur. This is nothing important. Then, of course, where medical stents were developed after Sigurd, 1988, Julio Palmer's and uh, Richard Schatz developed a stainless steel stent for the coronary applications. And this was a big landmark, the second important landmark. But, of course, it required for the bare metal stent. It had a re-stenosis, required pure antiplatelet. Many of you will know that <coughs> earlier it was diclopidine rather than diclopidine which was being used for this anticlopidine. Before anticlopidine, they were only giving oral anticoagulant. It was actually 
the French trial, the short must trial, MUST must trial, which proved the efficacy of teclopidine, which is the antiplatelet, different kind. But drug eating stents were, of course, the third revolution. This was very important, and this came up in 2002 and 2003 because they felt that there was a new incable hyperplasia and the restenosis post bare multiple stent implantation. And this was known as Achilles heel for the angioplasty and standing. And this was to the range of 20. Or of course, if, we, if you compare with the BOBA, where, which is, of course, the bear, uh, just the balloon angioplasty, it was much less, but still it was there about 10 to 15 percent patients had a restenosis, and that's why we needed something more. The so anti proliferating agent was infused onto the stent. And then this drug looking stent concept came up. And 2002 to 2003, the first introduced by the European and US markets. And in India also, at the same time, we started using drug looking stent in 2003, something I remember. At that time, it was Cordis, which was using it here. So, restenosis post DS, of course, it was much reduced. And if you see this diagram of endothelialization uh, and further and neoproliferation, it was much reduced with the drug looking stent. For that, the important was that the dual antiplatelets were to be used for more than six to twelve months. But of course, the fourth revolution, which was came, of course, was where <laughs> this was a bioabsorbent stent, which of course became in controversial lines because of the increased stent thrombosis. And now we are not using that much. But this was considered to be a fourth revolution. So now coming on to the main topic, which is drug looting balloon. I have seven minutes, minutes to left. Conventional semi-compliant angioplasty balloons. These are balloons which are semi-compliant, compliant, conventional. Covered with an anti proliferating drug, which is released into the vessel wall during inflation of the balloon. Inflation usually at normal pressure with specific minimal inflation time. Active substance on the drug looting balloon has to be lipophilic with high absorption rate through the vessel wall to compensate for the short period of contact between the inflated balloon and the vessel wall. Because you see, while you're taking out the balloon cell, when you're putting a drug looting stent, the stent remains there and with the time for the drug to proliferate, uh, so to prevent the proliferation of new internal proliferation. So this is only short inflation time. So the, the drug has to be highly lipophilic so that it can be absorbed. This is a compared to drug looting balloon. FT drug molecule, urea excipient molecule, which helps in this agent to facilitate the optimal drug delivery. And this is the agent and the balloon and the vessel wall. And of course, three micrograms per millimeter, which is not so important technically otherwise for us. But this is the amount of paclitaxel which is used. And why paclitaxel? Because this is actually a very highly lipophilic molecule rather than serolimus. And that is why paclitaxel drug looting balloons are <coughs> being used as of now. So what are the promising indications? Clinical only in instant restenosis in bare metal. Of course, nobody is using bare metal these days. So instant restenosis in drug looking stent is the primary indication, which is also approved by ESC guidelines. In of course, denewable lesions, that means uh, in small vessels where you cannot put a stent and you feel that this can be do better. I'll show you some clinical evidences. Smaller side branches and bifurcation. For example, if you have P1, which is small size, or still, I have done many cases of this sort, and osteal origin, you would not like to put a stent, and you cannot want to jeopardize the main arteries, the arteries more or less around 2 millimeter only, diagonal branch, for example, and then would like to do a drug looting balloon. In patients with contraindication to prolong dual antiplatelet, <coughs> of course, their drug looting balloon can be used. So, coming on to the why practice the highly lipophilic rapid intracellular. Uh, uptake and retention vessel wall for nearly a week, acts by reversal binding to microtubules, inhibiting cell division, shorter incubation time, three minutes with battery cell almost completely inhibits smooth muscle cell proliferation for more than 12 to 14 days. This is actually histopathological pathological study which has shown that it inhibits smooth cell proliferation for up to 12 to 14 days. Zaccharolimus also lipophilic can also be used in DCP applications. First generation, there are three generation of drug looking balloon. I will go very uh, quickly about this. The first one, Bayer, Germany, Sukhan Plus, where they use a drug carrier applied on balloon surface, which was I, IO Pro My, increases drug solubility and speed uptake. This is actually a drug carrier. Of course, paclitaxel concentration, hypermarin is 22 times the insuline. Second generation was paclitaxel again with hydrophilic spacer molecule urea. These are Europe or Germany from paclitaxel. And of course, Biotronic Germany, they started this uh, different uh, molecule for the uh, for hydrophilic spacer molecule, which is urea. And of course, the third generation, there's no carrier, uh, which is coming from uh, resonance, Ashen, Germany. And of course, Blue Medical, Netherlands. There's no carrier, very tight bound of paclitaxel paclitaxel in between balloon folds. Not so important technically, but it is just to theoretically cover the topic that three types of drugs, the DEPs are available. 
So there are different types and there are different formulations released from the new surface, vessel wall, various companies, B Brown, Metrad, Eurocorp, which is being used in India, Eurocorp from Germany, and then of course Biotronic, Berlin. So these are different companies which are making this, and the type of coating is different. And in below text, there's no carrier. So it is only theoretically important for law although clinically it may not be so important. What are the practical points before DB use? Drag using balloon. Proper vessel preparation is very important. With pre dilatation balloon should be 0.5 to 1 millimeter smaller than intended drug looking balloon. That means you are, you, when you are doing a pre-delegation, it's always important. It's always important, rather mandatory to do it. It is not like just direct standing. You have to have a pre-delegation. Very well done. Ensure adequate one-to-one -one sizing between vessel and DEB. Ibus in coronary should be normally used. We are not using Ibus so often, OCT or the mice. And um, Ibus in peripheral, but this is a guideline which has been said that, of course, you have to use Ibus to know the exact sizing of the vessel, shorter transfer time from accessory to DEB, only three minutes left. Single prolonged session for complete drug list in the recommended time. So what are the, I will go, what are the, we'll discuss evidences in each category. Category with DEB versus BMS versus DSS, yeah. these subjects. What are the different subjects? Instant hysterosis, de novo regions, small size, less than 2.5 meter, smaller size in bifurcation, I told you, for example, if you are bifurcating such a dialogue brand, which is also But it has shown this was by the time the DB versus and if you can see it's nine percent forty percent with that's what and this is very positive. See please as Let us This is actually important. One trial which I would like to highlight is I discussed about three groups and they found that in DEP it was 22% TLR. I'm not talking about TLR, this was DEP with 22%, PES 13% in fact detection, and of course, which is not significant. Significant you can use in instant the eluting balloon with service of packing itself eluting strength. There is no doubt because the results are and that is why ES Canada has shown drug balloon are recommended for the treatment of instant resources, whether it is through BMS or DES and class 1A indication. So this is what indication evidence instant resources and uh, of course, DES are also recommended for treatment of instant exposure, with other, but both are class 1A. So it's, it's actually the operator who has to choose between DEB versus DEB versus uh, eluting DES. So coming on to the small vessels, these are very important categories because Indian diffuse disease, diabetic patients that you have a smaller disease. And these are more subsets where you can actually use the drug eluting balloon where you feel that strength will not do good. So this trial, I have two trials to this is a randomized type of comparison. DEB versus PES, 60% diod balloon, bailout BMS. The MACE 35% was 13%. Of course, MACE was higher in the DEB group. Here the Bellow trial, DEB versus PSS, 7.8 versus this 13.2. The two different trials have shown different results. The second trial, which is 182, has shown that that not no significant clinical significant. But in the in the group which is DEB versus paclitaxel eluting strength. Uh, so small I so I will just uh, small vessels. I told you about bifurcation. I've told you then bifurcation lesion. This is small trial, just 30 seconds. Sir. Uh, ISR, if you see the main 20%, 29%, 17%, and not clinically significant. What they've done? DEB in the main branch, side branch of BMS. And main branch versus BMS versus POBA versus DES versus POBA. So this is T-stenting, provisional T-stenting approach, where they have not found any major difference if you are using a drug looking balloon, even bifurcation lesion. So uh, the rest I will cover. So ESC guideline, unfortunately, 
214, I don't have the latest guidelines. But of course, it's a clinical operator who has to see if you are a smaller vessel, instant cirrhosis. If you are where you don't want to put a stand austere diagonal, you have to use dry booking balloon and they do fairly well. I have one patient we also to come in, include it, but I have no positive of time where I have done a dry booking balloon in diagonal time of first product. Of course, we have done many ISR, but where the patient has fared very well for five years follow up is available. So to conclude, TEB is a promising technology in both coronary and peripheral artery disease, not suitable for all patients. For technical success, requires proper patient selection, clinical angiographic correction, proper prevention of vessel. Very important. Proper prevention of the vessel is important. And of course, and then of course, you have to have your own discretion vis a vis a clinical evidence. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Vivek Gupta, for such an exhaustive overview of uh, regulating balloon. Uh, we'll have the discussion at the end. So we now call upon Dr. Uh, Nagendra Bhubadi. Uh, who is a uh, professor at uh, uh, SRMC uh, uh, Chennai and he will be discussing about two topics one on calcium modification in PCI, how to breach the barriers, followed by uh, imaging. Okay. Good to